Hey guys, and welcome back to Steamworks. So yesterday I got some mail for our certificate expiration notices for several of our rental boilers. And I thought I'd take this opportunity today to talk to you about your own boilers, annual open and close, and preparing for an inspection. So let's check it out. So when we talk about inspections, the first thing you want to keep in mind is you want to, want to plan accordingly. For one, uh, depending on the size of the boiler, you may need up to a, a full day for the boiler to cool off after you drain it. And uh, secondly, with gaskets and everything, anything that you open in your fireside and water side, you're going to want to make sure before you do any of this work or inspection that you have the proper gaskets on hand. All right, and so when you shut your boiler down, you're going to want to follow your manufacturer's recommendations on doing that. So refer to your operator's manual and it can give you specific instructions on shutting down the boiler. Now after you've shut your boiler down, you want to be sure and uh, lock out and tag out any steam and electrical devices, your uh, feed pumps, your oil pumps, any, any anything in the system you want to be at, just be sure that nothing can be energized while you're working on it. So make sure and check all your lockout tag out. At this point, you're going to want to open all your drains, vent lines on the boiler, that way you can begin draining it down. And then uh, you're going to want to take and remove any uh, crosses and T's inspection plugs. Then you're going to want to remove any manway covers or handhold inspection covers. Uh, get those out and again you're going to be looking uh, on the water side looking for any deposits of scale. You're going to want to be inspecting the tubes for any pitting or uh, you just any damage or, or excessive scale buildup. So you're going to open all your low water fuel cutout device float chambers. You want to open those up. You're again, you're looking for any kind of uh, scale buildup, any deposits, anything that could like impinge that uh, float mechanism from articulating properly. If you, any of your secondary low water cutoffs, pull those, inspect the probes. You want to clean the probes if they have any accumulation on them. Now, after you've finished up your water side inspection and cleaning, then you can move to your water or your fire side, and this you'll you'll want to open up your uh, your boiler doors or your furnace side and you're going to want to just basically do an inspection. You're looking at the refractory, uh, looking for any cracks or any kind of loose refractory, anything falling out of there. And of course, when you, as you move through the, the, the furnace and the fire side, you're going to be wanting to inspect for uh, soot and you, you may need to perform. It's a good idea to go ahead and perform fireside cleaning where you're going to punch the tubes. So uh, this is the time to do that. And you're wanting to basically, so, it, you know, because essentially what you're doing is you're cleaning the water side cleaning the fire side so you're getting the best heat transfer possible on both of those as you get ready to put your boiler back online. You know, while this isn't necessarily part of the boiler, it's this is an excellent time during your annual open and close to go ahead and inspect the feed tank as well. Uh, you're wanting to check your, uh, your feed control, any float mechanisms for your feed control, uh, your, your thermostats or your thermal wells here you know, cleaning those, uh, the inside, just inspecting everything, looking for any scale deposits or any loose debris inside the feed tank as well. That way you don't have anything to worry about when you're getting back up online. It's a good idea to go ahead and check any gauges as well or your uh, thermometers on any tanks and systems. It's, uh, if you have any that are hard to read or hard to, to see, then going ahead and uh, replacing those, this is an excellent time to do that. During your annual inspection also, it's a great time to consider, uh, you know, you want to inspect your uh, sight glasses, uh, you know, just look at them, make sure that they're not stained or any etching going on. Uh, basically, you, you know, again, this is a, a, a visual indicator for your boiler's water level. So, I mean, this is primary and this is a great time. Boiler's offline, it's a great time to go ahead and get that changed out. Go ahead and, and pull your feed water strainers, I inspect that, look for any loose debris. Um, you service the strainer, get it back in place. That way, you know you got a, a fresh start. And when you when you go to get back up online, you've got everything back in place. So there it is, guys. I hope this was helpful for you in planning your own boiler's annual maintenance and inspections. And it's always best practice to refer to your owner's manual to see if there's any spe uh, specific maintenance requirements there. And if you like this video, be sure and hit that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up. If you don't mind, share a video. And other than that, we'll see you next week for another Steamworks.